how could they? God's seed is deep inside of them. God's seed, God's seed. That seed of God carries the genetics of God. And that genetics, a particular genetics it carries, is a genetic composition called love. God is love. Viewers, wherever you are, welcome to Kingdom First Half Hour, a program of the Catholic Charismatic Renewer, Abuja Agdausis, that will be coming to you on this station, same day, to bless you through which God has been doing diverse things in the life of people, changing life, bringing men into the kingdom. We want to continue with what God has been doing today, and you are opportune to be tuned to this program, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. But before we go on, I want us to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, you have brought us thus to yourself. Thank you because all we are and all we have belong to you. You are interested in the welfare of our body and the welfare of our soul. I pray that as you take us through this short moment with you, we will end up being transformed, be blessed, and be released with further protection for exploit on earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In continuation of our theme, Arise and Shine, today we want to look at a sub-theme that is titled, How to Arise. I know that for some times now, God has been ministry to us concerning the theme with which we are running for 2017, Arise and Shine. And today we just quickly want to look at how to arise. Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 1 to 3. And he said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the light, the Lord will rise, arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our heart, in the name of Jesus. How to arise is what we are looking at. The word arise, being the first part of our team, is a command. A command that has peculiar characteristics, which I just want us to mention before we look at how to arise. The first peculiarity of this time we are looking at today is that it is urgent. It appears that God is in a hurry. It appears that the way the Lord presented this instruction, this command to us, is urgent. He just said, arise, shine. He didn't say you may wish to arise or sometimes tomorrow you will arise or in the next 10 years you will arise. No, no, no. He said, arise. So it's a, t- a command that is urgent. It is also a command that comes with a provision. You know, workers can only be able to, de- 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 to deliver to the tune of the resources given them. And no matter how good a worker is, if he's not giving the right resources in terms of amount and otherwise, he can't achieve. So I hear God saying, what you need to rise and shine is there, and he said, the glory of the Lord, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It is also a command that comes with a necessity. In the event that somebody is asking, why would God want me to arise, and why would God want make his light upon me and his glory, it is because darkness has covered the world. A world covered with darkness like ours today needs light, and God is in a hurry, and as a matter of urgency, calling on his own people to rise and fill these vacuums that are left, that has enabled darkness to cover the whole world. And it is also a command that comes with a reward. And I saw God saying, if you rise and shine with the light I will be providing you, the kings will come to the brightness of your light. And the Gentile will come to the dawning of your day. It means that any man, any woman who is hearing the sound of my voice today, that may decide to take this command serious, will 
have the word focus on him or her. The attention of the whole world that has been languishing in darkness will be drawn to this person because a light cannot be hidden in darkness. And as we look also at that command, I discover that it was a command that was addressed by God himself to his own people, Israel. The Bible says he chose them not because of their number, not because they, they, of, of their love or their holiness, but because he made a promise to their forefather Abraham. Out of his love, he chose them. And we saw Israel with time, slumbering in sin. They slumbered, they slept, they lost sense of purpose and sense of a reason for which God chose them. And as we began to look still at Isaiah chapter 50, 52, from verse 1, we could see why God needed them to arise at this particular time. And he said, awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the bond of your neck. O captive daughter of Zion. It means that Jerusalem, even when they were choosing, they slumber. They slumber into the dust of sin. So they were taken captive by the power of the enemy. They sold themselves. As you read forward in this scripture, you could see God saying, where is the certificate of I selling you? God was questioning, I did it sell you. You give yourself out. And it is like our generation today, where everywhere is covered with darkness, is covered with gloom. There is a lot of evil being perpetrated. Sin is walking on its two feet on the street. Everywhere you go, it appears that the kingdom that is being projected and perpetrated is only that of the sinful one, the devil. Corruption in all places. Killing, bloodshed. Marriages are failing. People bear Christianity by name, but by action, no way. You enter anywhere, you could no longer distinguish an Israelite from a Gentile, just as in our day, you cannot distinguish a, a sinner from a Christian. It, was, it is clear that people whom God has chosen have lowered themselves to the very level of others that one now begins to think as God, no man or no woman on earth again, does it? Is there no remnant of the people of God on earth today? God, therefore, is sending us this signal, a command, that we need to arise in this nation. That you looking at me, you need to arise in your family. You need to arise in your place of work. You need to arise where you do your business. That it is enough complaining but that you need to stand up to your responsibility and begin to do your own side of it. I notice that God has done his own side by giving us salvation. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2 says, The salvation he gave us is such a great salvation that we cannot toy or mess up with. It's such a great salvation that we cannot toy or mess up with. God has finished his own. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. He has done his own part and he has concluded it. But as I look through the scripture, I discover that even when the salvation God gave us is great, it leaves us with some responsibility. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 from verse 12 and 30, the Bible encouraged us and said, we need to work out this salvation in fear and trembling. For it is God who gives us power both to will and to do in his good pleasure. We have a responsibility. Why it is the responsibility of God to make light available? Why it is the responsibility of God to enable us to shine? It is the res our responsibility to take a position. It is our responsibility to wake up from our slumber. It is our responsibility to arise. To arise because I notice that the light can only be able to give out its light 
to the extent to which it is placed. Where how high a light is placed, determine how far this ray can go. God is saying, instead of lining dust, you should arise. That it is time for you, listening to me now, to awake. Enough of bearing that I am a Christian, I belong to this denomination, I am ordained, I am this and that. Christianity that does not bring forth manifestation is not different from other religions. So the Lord says, we should arise. And quickly, for the want of time, I just want us to go straight to look at how are we going to arise. The Lord thing I want to say is that salvation God has given us is a product of knowledge. It appears that it's a product of knowledge. Jesus said to the Jews who believe in him in John chapter 8, 31, 32. He said, if you obey my commandments, then you will be my disciples. He said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Brethren, being Jews, they were God's chosen people. Believing in Christ, they were Christian. Two advantages. God's chosen people by birth, and God's chosen people by adoption in Christ. But Jesus said, if they obey him, they are his disciples. But he said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. The level of knowledge a man has about certain principles in Christianity will determine the extent of exploit this person can make. So, I want to quickly lay by the situation of God few parameters or steps that we need to take. Number one, you need to know your value in Christ. If you will arise, if you will be able to arise, you must know whom you are in Christ. Christ has made you into something. You are valuable now in Christ. Let me talk to you, brethren, wherever you are, that you are no longer a non-entity. But by virtue of the fact that you've given your life to Christ, and you have been adopted by the Almighty in Christ into his family, you have a value. I am a valuer by profession. And I've come to discover that the price is paid for a particular commodity most times is an indication of the value it carries. I notice. As the Bible was speaking to us, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 20, it was clear to us that we were not bought by perishable things like gold and silver. He said you were not bought from your empty way of life by perishable things like gold and silver. But you were bought by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Let me announce to you with gladness, that you are equal to the value of the blood of Jesus. No matter what that sickness has reduced you to, no matter what you yourself has reduced yourself to, no matter what the condition of this nation has brought you into, no matter what you have carried in your heart now, and you are beginning to say, I must say this, I must say that, you were purchased by the blood of Jesus. You are equal to the blood of Jesus. Amen. And this is why I pity Christians that we still go and carry a fowl or a goat or a dog to sacrifice in the state of their life. Somebody bought with such a valuable blood and decide to reduce yourself to the level of a fowl. That is why you can still be eaten as a fowl by some witches and occult men. But you have been given a value. You'll be bought over. The life that you carry now is the life equal to the blood of Jesus. And Leviticus 17 level said, the life of everything is in his blood. You are therefore equal to the life of Jesus. No wonder the Bible says, as he is in heaven, so we are. There is a grace that is hanging on you. There are protections that are deposited on you. God has transferred you from the level of not being to be somebody. Then you are a man of value. You are not a man that could be, can be pushed aside. You are a man by virtue of your Christian who has been made into something. 
First, no one that first Peter 2 9 said, You are a choosing generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are God's holy nation. And I have chosen you to declare the good work of Him who has called you out of darkness. And as we look at Colossians 2, verse 9, He started by telling us that the full deity of God dwells in Christ bodily, and He said, And in you is the fullness. If Christ now lives in you, and the fullness of deity lives in Christ, you carry the totality of the blessed trinity downloaded into your tiny soul. So, you have a value in Christ. God has made you into something. You must recognize this and you must carry it as a person. Number two, you will need to learn to acknowledge, to appreciate, and celebrate this your new giving position. You will need to learn to acknowledge, to appreciate, and celebrate this new position given you in Christ. As the Bible speaks to us, in Ephesians chapter, six, uh, chapter 2 from verse 6, it said to us that God has raised us in Christ to sit with Him in His heavenly realm. You now have a position by virtue of your value. It doesn't depend on what you can do, or what you cannot do. God made it so. You are somebody of a rank. No wonder the Bible was speaking saying that the power at work in us in Ephesians 1 is the same mighty power with which God has raised Jesus from the dead. You carry, you know, you can command a domain, you command a kingdom. You are a man to be reckoned with in this generation. And as we are looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 35, the Bible simply says that this position, this Lord, the Lord have extended to us, are not. We cannot be separated from it. So, I wish that to let us know, praise God, that you need to walk in this mentality. Men and women who walk in this mentality, we are those who we are able to do extraordinary things. For example, our Blessed Virgin. Just a girl who have an encounter with an angel one day, and the angel says, the Lord is with you. Hey Mary, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. And a young lady took off to go and visit one of her kids' women, Elizabeth, because the angel made mention of that issue, that she was pregnant. And come in, Elizabeth said, How can I be so honored to be visited by the mother of my Lord? Hear what Mary said. Mary said, My soul does glorify God, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior. And she went on to say, She said, Henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. I want to let us know. Now, Mary has not seen a visible sign of a pregnancy. Mary has not seen a physical appearance of the child. But because of the level of knowledge, and that by the pronunciation of the angel, and the confirmation of Sister Elizabeth, that this matter was settled, she declared and said, All generations shall call me blessed. I say this also, you said, Paul. But having this mentality, and getting to know what God has made in me to say it clearly. He said, For I can do all things, not so, through Christ, who strengthens me. I can do all things, not so, through Christ, who strengthens me. And as he was speaking in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, All things are yours. You need to recognize this. You are a man that has been made to be able to change the situation of this country. God has released upon you grace to work upon the seas, the sea, and the trouble of the sea in this country. Many of us have given up. Many of us have lost faith because sins now abound. The love of many are worthy code. 
Are you worth it, coach? Let me report to you, brother, sister, as you look at me now through this television, that God is in the business of turning nations around, not by multitudes, but by few people. The next step that you need to take, if you want to shine, is that you need to operate in the realm of courage and determination. You need to operate from the realm of courage and determination. In Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, before they has raised a man, Moses, Joshua was a boy that was attended to Moses. He was always with Moses. He saw Moses perform miracles. He saw Moses brought water and rock. He saw Moses cut and bread came from heaven for the children of God to eat. He saw Moses pray to God and quake came down. He saw Moses live a life of meekness. He saw Moses commanding respect. And all of a sudden, this Moses died. And at the end of the day, the Lord came to Joshua and said, You are the one to take up the leadership. Joshua, look and said, There is no longer Moses. Joshua, the apostle, said, There was no longer Jesus who had taken away our Lord. But I said, God said to Joshua, You don't need Moses. You don't need a physical existence of one Jesus with you now. All it, have we know that have made you into something is to be courageous and determined. God was simply saying that your courage in the pursuit of his righteousness, your courage and determination in his way, can replace whatever you think you don't have now to be able to shine. They can replace whatever you think is lacking in your life for you to be able to shine. No wonder what God and he was addressing the people of Ephesus in Ephesians 6 10, he said to them, to be strong in the Lord. You just need to be strong. Jesus said to the apostles in John 20, 21, that it is as the Father sent me that I have sent you. Go on until a man starts moving, things cannot continue, begins to happen. No man ever recorded a revival. No man ever recorded a deliverance. No man ever recorded a breakthrough. No man ever recorded the turning around of a situation to the glory of God until they began to put all courage and determination in their pursuit of their God given mission. You are a child on a mission on earth. The next thing I want to say, the number 14, is that you must learn to handle your greatest enemy. And when I say handle your greatest enemy, some people will think I am talking of the devil. Fine and good. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says Satan is our enemy. But I discovered from experience that Satan does not just come out. Have you ever seen Satan come and say, oh, I'm Satan. I want you to do. No, 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 no. Go with those days. Satan operates with instruments. The normal instrument of this devil is evil spirits. He can torment you with evil spirit. Number two instrument of the devil is the world system. The world system can cause you to serve Satan. I'm not here to talk about that today. Amen. I'm not here to talk about that. But there is one instrument of Satan that is closest to us. It's always with us. And that is what I want to call today Mr. Flesh. Mr. Flesh. Your flesh can hinder the love of God in your life. Your flesh can truncate the workings and the manifestations of God in your life. In Romans chapter 8 from verse 7, the Bible simply says, Canary mandate is to be an enemy to God. And it said, those who carry this kind of which is also flesh, he said, you can God. And he said, in fact, you cannot please God. No man who dwells in the flesh can please God. No man who dwells in the flesh can actually please God. And that is why I'm calling brethren that you need to learn to learn about your sin. The next thing I need want us to look at is that you need to keep your gaze on the ground. You are here, but I bet you heaven is your home. The Bible is speaking to us in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, it says, If our hope in Christ is just about this present time, he said, Of all men, we are most miserable. Let that heavenly reward be your push. Keep looking at heaven. Don't lose hope about heaven. 
And finally, with the word of time, you need to know that you are the change the world is waiting for. The ABC law guy says that change begins with you. Yes, change actually begins with you. You need to know that you are the change the world is waiting for. For in Romans chapter 8, from verse 18, the Bible says, Creation waits in eager expectation for the manifestation of the children of God. It is my prayer that I should take this step. The Lord, through His grace, will use you to turn around your world and turn around your nation. And on the last day, you'll be welcome in heaven. I want us to pray. Thank you, O Lord. We have listened to you. Release unto us grace. Grace to rise. Pull us up from where we are sitting and lying down and cause us to stand for you. Grant us the grace to do the right thing. That your kingdom will come. Your will will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very much for listening to us again today. As I said, this is Kingdom First Half Hour. We are members of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. I know God has blessed you. And if you are convinced of this blessing and you want to continue to enjoy this fellowship with God among us, Visit any of the Catholic Church, as of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in that parish. You will be led to them, you will be blessed, and you will be taught to lead, how to fellowship more with God. Till then, know that God is in charge. We will meet you again, this same time, this same station. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you.